Welcome to the Crochet Tutorial with Cozy Rosie UK and today I'm going to be showing you a couple of different ways that you can attach um, your crochet dowel to your wall hanging or you can also use this technique to add handles onto granny square bags depending on how these handles are set out. So these are actually using two different techniques and I'm going to take you through exactly how to do both of these. If you would like to see any of the details about these patterns or where you can purchase these beautiful yarns that I've used, you can head to the description box where you will find the links to the two different posts. So today we are going to talk about two different types of technique that we can use to crochet or to add our crochet onto our dowels. So with this technique here, this dowel has been sewn on to the project and then an extra strap has been added on. In this case, the bag handle has actually been crocheted on to this. You can see how this is a very well-loved handbag. I took this on holiday with me and I always take it on holiday with me. This one last went to Mexico, hence why there's a bit of dirt on these handbag handles. This one's been crocheted on using a single crochet. So it actually gives you more fabric, I suppose, is the easiest way of doing it, or strands that are covering the dowel. Now, obviously, you can make a feature of adding your dowel, or you can kind of make it more solid. So, yes, I would have attached, before anyone asks, I would have attached it to this end, but when that was done, it meant I couldn't open the bag. So that's why it's only in the centre, and actually it works really well when it's warm. So let's go through both of those techniques. You can skip through to the single crochet technique using the... Um, timestamps at the bottom of this video if you want to head over and straight away not to use this technique. But I'm going to do this step by step and it's going to be a little bit neater because this one was definitely rushed. Um, and I think from, from an ease point of view, or should I say from a less fiddly point of view, this is definitely the easiest of the two techniques. Um, for me personally, I prefer the look of the single crochet um, adding on. So I've got another one of my running rings squares here um, and I'm going to add it on to this dowel. Now you can purchase your dowel in a multitude of places from craft shops to hardware shops and then you can cut it to the length that you want. I usually buy it in metre lengths from hardware shops. I make quite a lot of wall hangings. Um, I like to add various different squares onto dowels to create different types of wall hangings. So effectively, we're going to be sewing this dowel onto our square or whatever wall hanger you're using. I'm going to be using a contrasting colour so that you can see where I'm working, because obviously this is not the clearest of colours to show you. Um, but it's the only project I have left to sew on. So I'm just literally going to grab my darning needle and pull through. Now, I've got quite a length, so I'd say I've got probably nearly a metre here. And we do have to kind of work through all the stitches with this meter and pull it through all the time. And this is why it can become a little bit tedious. Um, what I'm going to do is, first of all, attach this yarn to my square itself. Because that way it doesn't come undone. So I'm just going to, in this case, I would usually put it through a stitch um, just with my darning needle pulling through towards the end of the project and then just fastening that on. And then what we are going to do is placing our dowel in position, doesn't matter where you start, whatever's more comfortable, we can then put our needle around, and I'm gonna go straight into that corner space and bring that tail all the way back through. And that kind of anchors it in place, not very well, but a little bit. So once my dowel is secured into the first stitch by just working back through it, I'm going to place my yarn over the back so you can see it there. Because as I go through this stitch, we're essentially creating a knot by making sure that our needle goes over that strand of yarn and it will create a knot. So as we pull that through, it creates another loop, but it also creates a knot at the back, a very loose knot. And we just repeat that the whole way along. So I've got that yarn at the back here, and then I'm inserting my needle, making sure that it goes over the yarn and not under, if you can see that from this side, so that when it comes through, you're working over. I'm just going to bring that yarn over because we are knotting. 
so that as you come through, it creates not only the loop, but it knots it into place as well. Now I'm not gonna do in mine too tightly, just so you can see what I'm doing. And again, you've got that thread there and working that needle over. I'll do a few more, we'll see what the back looks like. You need to take your time, make sure that everything's the same size and the same distance apart. You might not be as fastidious as I am, but I like the way this one looks. And I'm using my other hand to kind of hold the dowel against and in the right direction. You can see that it's creating these kind of loopy knots all the way along. And on the other side of the project, you'll see that it's helping to keep the stitches spaced out. It's not bunching them up too much. So you're not being overly tight with this. You can adjust it by you know, using your needle or your fingers to kind of pull and increase the tension throughout your stitches. But you are effectively sewing it onto your project. So you would literally just complete that the whole way along. And then at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to attach securely the hanging element. But before we do that, let me show you how we would single crochet or in the US single crochet, UK double crochet, your dowel onto your project. If you wanted to single crochet your dowel and attach it to your project that way, we start by making a slip knot and putting that on our hook. And we want to attach the yarn into that last stitch in our corners, just with a slip stitch there, and that just secures it. Now to do our chain one, we need to work around our dowel at the same time. So I'm kind of holding my project and my dowel and my yarn all in my yarn hand. Once we've done our slip stitch, we're going to create a chain one working around our dowel, okay? So we're going to insert our hook into the same stitch again. I'm holding my yarn and my dowel all in my hand and resting it on the surface. And I'm going to put my hook behind the dowel, grab the yarn and bring it through and straight through the loop on my hook and just give that a wiggle to tighten. And that is half of our chain one because <laughs> now we've got our dowel attached to our first stitch. We are then going to just do another chain one by slip stitching effectively and that creates the same look and two of our lines. We're then going to work continually along our project. I'm gonna try and move this down so it doesn't hit the table too much. So we insert our hook into the next stitch and put our hook again behind our project, bring our yarn back through the stitch and then complete our single crochet as normal. We'll do another one of those together. So you insert your hook into the next, the top of the next stitch, if you can see that with my dark, dark yarn here, behind the dowel and grab that yarn, bringing that yarn through, yarning over the hook as normal, but around the dowel at the same time, and then pulling through. Oh, God. One last time, because I don't know if I'm showing you this very well. So we insert the hook into the next stitch, and behind the dowel, we yarn over, bringing that yarn back round the dowel. We then yarn over the hook to complete the stitch around the dowel to complete that single crochet. And what we should get is when we kind of manipulate this, the stitches around, if I bring my loop up, let me do a little chain one so we can see. What you have is extra loops compared to the other one and you have this row of single crochets facing you against the edge of your project and I think this looks a, a little bit neater and in theory believe it or not it is quicker than working and sewing it on I'd recommend that you don't cut a length to do this if you just work from a ball of yarn because it uses more yarn than sewing but you just I did a chain one let me get rid of that 
you can just continue the whole way along your project working through each stitch and kind of just making sure that you're readjusting the position of the dowel and the stitch so that it's close to the project where you can. So it's just always going behind and over that dowel and that just attaches it to the project. At the back, you can see this side. So you can work with the reverse of your project showing so you just have this coming out of the top if you wanted to. I turn that around because that might be your preferred look that you don't see the stitch when it's hanging or you can have the stitch showing. But either way of this single crochet join, it's tighter most definitely if you work tightly. Um, you don't have to manipulate your stitches as much as you do with the sewing on either. So this is my preferred method. I don't always do it because you have to have a bit of yarn left over to do. Um, but yeah, and it kind of, you can position your stitches and separate them so that it blocks the, um, helps to block your project as well. And you can move it along the dowel too. So go ahead and complete whichever technique you want. And then I'm going to show you how to attach your hanging section to your dowel as well. So once you've attached your square or your wall hanging to your dowel, the next thing to do is to create how it hangs. Now you can opt to attach it to the last stitch in each side so it comes straight up, or you can opt to create a hanging on either end. So let's go for the either end option first. And once again, I do like to cheat. So I am just gonna simply tie a knot onto one end here. Let's make a double knot so it's nice and secure. And don't worry, we're gonna hide this end afterwards. Now the easiest way to do this is to hold the end near the edge that you want um, on the opposite end and simply wrap around a few times. And once you're happy with how many runs you've done, you can then secure that with that end so that it doesn't come undone. Again, just with a double knot. Don't worry, we're gonna hide that in once we weave this end in at the end. It's not going anywhere, that one. And you just simply make it the length that you want. So you can measure that. Remember that if you're using actual yarn it's going to be quite stretchy and then measure down to the other side and we're going to once again simply knot. You need to allow I would say at least um, 40 maybe a meter worth of yarn to create this. I'm just going to bring that through so that secures this end as well. And then we just repeat the other way. So we're going to make sure the knot stays at the top and wrap back around. Ideally the same number of times or taking up the same amount of space. Now we can't knot this bit yet. So I'm going to just bring that up here and cut, leaving a length there because we're going to use our yarn needle to finish off this end. And once that's threaded on, we can just kind of make sure that everything's nice and tight. I'm going to place my thumb to keep that secure, bringing it round and just underneath. Oh, where's that last one? There we go. Around the back and underneath that last loop that we made. Oh, wowzers. Sorry, doing this through camera is not as easy as it might appear. So we're kind of creating, bring that through. You've still got this loop here. I've made my end as always. Oh, I don't want to pull that. So you have this loop here and we are literally going to insert our needle through that again to create the knot and then pull tightly to secure. I'm literally pushing that up against and we just repeat that and again you can see that that's nice and tight as well and what we can do is thread our needle this is why you need a slightly smaller yarn needle because we're going to go all the way through so we're going to insert our needle under each strand you can weave it if you want to 
I might have to because I've almost attached mine too tightly, back towards the other end. This needle is way too big <laughs> for this job. Um, and bring that end through. Oh, I didn't have the yarn in it. Let's try that again. So once you've tied that first knot, we're going to then kind of weave our needle through this end, all the way through. So that we can then making sure that that's in the right place and that's up at the top. We're then I'm just going to knot this around this loop as well. Again, just to secure it and to keep everything nice and tight. And then to finish off this side, very simply, I'm going to go back through the same way or the other way, should I say? There we go. And then we can just snip that end off. And that's not going anywhere. Just going to do the same with this end, just push the needle all the way through. I will be honest, I cannot get this needle back through that end because this is a huge darning needle and I need I can't find my little one. It's probably down the side somewhere here. But anywho. And that's it. That's how you attach it. You can adjust those and put them so that it's nice and central. And it is as easy as that to attach your crochet dowel and your hanging. If you wanted to attach it to the edges here, you do the same process um, working around the last two kind of stitches that you made. Um, but there is a risk that as time goes on, it will pull the project in. So I tend not to use this. I use that technique as well. But as you can see, it's nice and neat. If you use the right darning needle, you won't bruise your wood. And there's no ends. It's just completely all wrapped up so i hope you found this a very useful tutorial and um, i will be back again shortly with another crochet tutorial for you um, as i said i've linked all the patterns that you've you've seen in this um video in the description box i hope you've hit the subscribe button and of course the notification bell so that i can see you again for another crochet tutorial very soon